Good day, chaps. Tis I, Clumpetcher139. Another two months, another Suicide Squad season. And really, it's more of exactly what we expected. Six new incursion missions, a new character, two minutes of cutscenes, and a reskin Brainiac fight. And at this point, I've just come to accept that that's how it's gonna be for the rest of this game's very limited lifespan. But, for what it's worth, they didn't do half bad on this one. To be fair, we're comparing it to the absolute fiasco that was Season 1, so really anything could be considered an improvement. Compared to the abysmal level 35 grind to unlock Joker last time, this season was a much more tame and acceptable 25 levels. Still not great by any means, nowhere near as acceptable as the Season 1 interlude that was only 10 levels, cause you know, there's still a lot of grinding, but you'd be surprised how much of a difference just 10 levels can make on your psyche. The new missions are nothing special, as we've come accustomed to. They exist solely for the purpose of grinding out levels, but they did do something actually unique with them this time around. Rather than having everything unlocked right at the start, there are a few missions unlocked only after reaching certain levels. This gives actual rewards in the midst of grinding that made it feel a lot less tedious than it was previously. Because even though the grind was tedious, it didn't really feel as bad since I was actually getting rewards and feeling a sense of progress, as mediocre as those rewards were. I don't really like the Frozen Wasteland aesthetic as much as the Funhouse aesthetic from last season, seeing as it's literally just... white. But there was one fun thing they did to spice these missions up a little, and that's adding crashing ice. Seemingly randomly throughout the map and mission, there will be these ice formations that just crash down onto stage to hurt you. I don't know where they're coming from, or why they're here, but it's at least a gimmick that's using the aesthetic to its advantage. On a similar note, I really like the music that they use for these levels. At this point, that shouldn't be a surprise. This game is full of great music, but all the new ones that we've been getting for the DLC have been really, really awesome and surprisingly don't get old with how much you listen to them while grinding. Most of which was done in the new Killing Time mission, which is so much better than Season 1's. I was able to make it all the way to level 26 on just one of my attempts and didn't even notice. It was that much fun. So grinding through it so many times just to gain levels really didn't feel all that bad. I will say though, the mission that you play to actually unlock Mrs. Freeze is pretty much the worst mission in the game. It was over in less than 5 minutes and had absolutely no challenge, despite choosing the higher difficulty. Oh, but speaking of... I eliminate Brainiac from the multiverse, and you fulfill your end of the deal, yes? Once again, they knocked it out of the friggin' park with this new character. Mrs. Freeze is so much friggin' fun to play, and unlike the fiasco that was season 1, this time I actually got to play as her. They made an actual logical choice this season and unlocked the character BEFORE you fight Brainiac, <sighs> giving you a reason to play as her in the actual season. And god I am so happy about that because I am one step closer to getting myself a new main. She takes on the tank role that King Shark had and adds in Deadshot speed and Joker's acrobatics. Her ice path feels really good to fly around with, and you can use it for a long time. Because they give you not one, but two recharges with her loop-de-loop. -loop. And I can already tell that this loop-de-loop -loop is going to be a lot of fun the more I master it. Because you can drop the charge any time in the loop, meaning you can change directions on a whim while regaining your full charge of the ice path. I didn't spend quite enough time to master it yet, but I can tell that when episode 2 drops, it's gonna be good. Weapon selection is also great for her. The simple fact that she gets a minigun is more than enough to satisfy me, but the fact that it actually pairs surprisingly well with her secondary being a pistol, due to the rapid reloads contrasting her minigun's long reload times, is awesome. And that's not even mentioning the fact that she has the single coolest melee weapon of the entire cast. A freaking ice battle axe. Just look at this thing and tell me she ain't badass. You can't. And unlike every other melee in the game, this one actually has a fun gimmick behind it as well. 
It wouldn't be an ice character without some kind of freezing mechanic. And we actually get one associated with her melee hit. Anytime you get a melee kill, which is very easy when you go for constant shield harvests, it creates a giant ice explosion that'll freeze any enemies in the vicinity. No affliction bonus necessary. The only downside being that she has by far the slowest melee hit in the entire game. The wind up and wind down is seriously slow, so if you're going for a melee hit, you need to be dedicated. Not only is this actually doing something with the gimmick of the character, but it's also just a really fun bonus to have with little to no downside. And that's kind of this whole character in a nutshell. Really fun bonuses. If you can figure out all her gimmicks, you'll be surfing around the battlefield like a madwoman mowing enemies down like nobody's business. And it's a ton of fun. So, once again, I have to call this new character a complete success. Keep it up, Rocksteady, only two more to go. Now, as far as the whole character just being a gender-meant Mr. Freeze, honestly, it's really weird. It would have been a whole lot cooler if they did someone outside of Batman's rogues, since by the looks of it, that's going to be the rest of our DLC characters as well. We could have had Captain Cold, who I honestly think would have fit Freeze's Ice Path gimmick a lot better, but I guess we've already got a Captain in Boomerang, so they couldn't do it. Whatever. But like, if they really needed a female ice-based representative, why not go with the objectively more awesome Killer Frost? There's already precedent for her using Freeze's Ice Gun in the Assault on Arkham movie, so making sure she can use the gimmick is the least of their problems. Plus, they wouldn't have had to make such a weird design. For the most part, Mrs. Free's design is actually pretty good. The suit and armor she has is really cool, I especially like the little half cape that she has on her shoulder, and her take on the goggles being holographic is a really neat touch. But like, why did they have to make her look like THE stereotypical mask lesbian? Like, seriously, they couldn't have made her just look like a normal woman? They had to go down the stereotypical route? Honestly, that's the least of my worries. It's not like you ever see her face anyway with the fogged up bubble head, you're mostly gonna be hearing her voice. And I must say that her voice cast is phenomenal. If her people can reach us, it'll prove their capabilities. And if they can't, it's still me and you against the world, Nora. I was a little worried after Joker's casting being somewhat misguided, but Mrs. Freeze's voice is honestly perfect. Do it for Nora, no matter the cost. I couldn't find the actress's name listed anywhere while writing this script or editing the video, so if somebody knows, please tell us in the comments. She deserves all the praise. And this great voice is absolutely necessary for the very few cutscenes that we got. Once again, we should come to expect lacking stories in coming seasons. But again again, this season's limited story was actually somewhat interesting. Unlike Joker, who was literally just recruited to the squad because reasons, Mrs. Freeze has an actual motive for joining the squad. Like her male counterpart in this universe, she just wants to save her dying wife. She was stuck in a frozen wasteland on her own world with absolutely no survivors or medical supplies available. And her universe's Waller, who by the way may or may not be from Assault on Arkham, had all but given up. But our Waller saw an opportunity with her, and having no other options, Freeze agreed to join, so long as they helped save Nora. It's a perfectly reasonable story explanation for recruiting her, and makes a hell of a lot more sense than whatever BS reasons they gave for bringing in Twinkler. And for the first time since... Um... I guess... Never, actually, in this game. They actually took a moment to do some serious time and didn't undercut it with a tasteless joke. I am... Marginally impressed. Don't know why it took you this long to do it, but... Hey, at least you did it! But that isn't the only story beat we got. Remember, we recruit Freeze before we fight Brainiac. So then, who do we save from the green squid guy? Well, the Flash. Yeah, clone theory is confirmed, y'all. And we're going to be spending the rest of this game's updates rescuing the Justice League members. Except Wonder Woman, I guess. She, uh, she might just be dead. 
I, I didn't think about that until now. What what are they going to do to revive Wonder Woman? Are they going to revive her or are they just going to leave her dead and that just be a completely ignored story point? Huh. Ah, who cares about that? We're one step closer to getting Batman back, boys. Celebration time! Jokes aside, it is a big relief to finally have this theory confirmed. But at the same time, it really makes you wonder what the point of any of this actually was. Like, the game is called Kill the Justice League, and we already killed the Justice League. But now we're going out of our way to save the Justice League instead, because we never actually killed the Justice League, just evil clones of the Justice League. So like, none of the story beats with killing the League members actually happened. Boomerang didn't almost piss on Flash's corpse. Green Lantern wasn't reduced to a dead guy in his underwear. Superman didn't lose to a bunch of idiots shooting guns while wearing rocks. And Batman didn't go out to a single shot in the face. They're all still alive, and all of these things were done to clones. So, should we be mad that all of this storytelling was ultimately for nothing? or happy at the fact that all this horrible storytelling was promptly ignored and will soon be back to the status quo. I really don't know how to feel about it. On the one hand, it feels like a complete cop-out. Like, it shows that they didn't have the balls to do what they wanted to and actually kill off the Justice League. Like, they knew it was stupid as soon as they wrote it and immediately had to write a way around fixing it. But. On the other, it feels right that all this bullshit is reversed and we don't have to live in a reality where one of our favorite characters of all time is killed by a single slug to the face. I don't really know. Maybe it's a discussion for another day, let me know if you want me to talk about it more. Let's just get back to Season 2 for now and worry about the other League members later when the other updates come out. The only other thing to talk about this update is the Brainiac fight, and what do you know, it's another reskin. Oh, but, but this time they make you fight two heroes. Not just Flash, but Superman too. Ooh. Ah. You know what? At least they did something unique this time around. Because this fight is really friggin' hard. Despite supposedly being a reskin, they added a lot of unique gimmicks to this fight. Chief among them were these giant energy balls that would literally remove your entire shield and leave you at 1 HP if they hit you. What the fuck, game? You've also got Flash's tornadoes now leaving fire trails behind on the field so you can't walk, a seemingly endless wave of armored enemies at one point, Superman getting a thunderclap attack, on top of everything else that you dealt with during the initial battles. This fight took a while to beat and my hands were killing me when it was all said and done. So even though it's technically a reskin, it was honestly a really fun fight. And I'm looking forward to the next one, which is supposedly going to be Superman and Green Lantern. I can only imagine how chaotic that one's going to be. So what would I call this season of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League? Honestly, I am very tempted to call it a moderate success. Is it or the game itself good? Hell no. This is still an absolute dumpster fire of a game that WB needs to learn a lesson from. But like I keep saying, it's a dumpster fire that I am happy to keep roasting marshmallows on. I overall had fun with this season, and I am cautiously optimistic about the rest of the season going forward. Please, for the love of everything, do not mess up Deathstroke like you did in Arkham Knight. My boy needs a W at this point. With that said, do all the YouTube stuff, because the Ice Woman cometh. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later, chaps.